Hey everyone, welcome to the stream. Today we are going to look at our first lesson for uh, Spike Prime, okay? So today we're not gonna do too much building. What we're going to do is we're going to understand uh, the Smart Hub, the, um, the Spike Prime Hub, and also to uh, get to know how we can do some basic debugging exercises. And also at the same time to look at the different peripherals that we have uh, that come with Spike Prime Kit. Okay, so um, if you are following at home, then make sure that you have your Spike Prime Hub ready, and uh, then we can turn it on and begin, okay? So in order to turn it on, make sure it's fully charged. If it's not fully charged, there's a USB cable you can plug uh, into the computer, and then it will charge by a USB cable. Uh, but to turn it on, you press the middle button in the middle here. So let's give a close up view over here. So I press this little button. And then we start off with this heart symbol. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to um, test out the motors. Okay, with EV3, there is a very handy port view uh, where you can uh, look uh, at a glance in uh, on the EV3 hub and see what the angles are of all the motors and all the um, uh, all the different things that are plugged into the EV3 hub. With Spike Prime, it's slightly different because there is a limitation with the screen. Obviously, it's not as high resolution as an EV3 hub, but it is still going to be very useful. So grab yourself the medium motor and then uh, plug it into port A, okay? So here, we're going to get medium motor medium motor so unlike ev3 spike prime doesn't uh, doesn't mind if you plug an input or output port in any of these uh port uh, uh, letters it's because uh, they are all input and output ports and you can see just from the side here uh if i zoom in a little bit you can actually see there's a really small um, symbol that's that's pointing that's two arrows. It's pointing uh, up and down. So it's to symbolise that these are both input and output ports, and uh, it's just really useful uh, so that you can have uh, multiple input ports and output ports and not be limited by um, uh, the the four maximum uh, ports. So here we've plugged in our motor. So here we have our heart. What we need to do is we need to um, press um, the, the middle button here. And then you can see that it is now lighting up at A, okay? It's just a, a symbol that represents that port A is being occupied by a peripheral. And obviously that's correct because we have our medium motor here. In order to test it, so, so just by looking at this, you can see that A is active, all right? Uh, a has a motor inside. But if we wanted to uh, move the motor, then we can press the, um, these arrows. So here, I can keep pressing. And then uh, press the other direction to slow it down and also to eventually spin it the other way. Okay. So being able to control, being able to control the motor like this is going to be really handy it's because um, we're able to do very simple functionality to test uh, different parts of your robot. Right? You don't have to plug it into your computer and uh, do some code blocks and then run the test that way. You can just simply run the test of your block. And that makes it a little bit more handy, okay? And uh, the cool thing is that this works with not just the medium motor, it also works with the large motor as well. So if I plugged in the large motor as well, let's plug in the large motor into port B. Here's my large motor. Plug it into port B. Okay, so I got two motors connected. 
uh, and I'm at the heart, so I can press the middle button. And you can see now that both A and B have lit up. It's just to show that um, both these ports are occupied uh, by your peripherals. And then I can press these arrows to increase the speed of these motors. And then I can press the other arrow to reduce the speed and eventually spin it the other way. And if I want to get out of this, then all I have to do is press the middle button again. Okay, pretty cool, right? So uh, it also means that if you had a very simple robot that does not require any programming, uh, this is how you can run it. You can, uh, for example, if you're doing uh, some sort of kinetic sculpture or uh, a very simple, say, um, a great ball contraption module, uh, for example, then you can just simply switch on the motor and then adjust the speed and then just keep it like that. Okay, so you don't have to do a whole stack of programming unless you needed uh, to have uh, more logic inside your app. Okay, so that is how we can. Um, uh, test and also uh, do an onboard control of our motors. But now let's look at uh, my favorite sensor for, for Spike Prime, and that is the force sensor. Okay, so the force sensor uh, looks a bit like, it looks a bit like the touch sensor. So this is the force sensor, okay? Um, it has a, a little button here uh, that takes, that is able to measure your resistance, okay? So let's plug this into C. Okay, so in order to test the force sensor, what we need to do is do the same thing. Let's go back into that, um, this motor control view. And then you'll see that um, here we have C is occupied, okay? And you'll recognize that this, this flashing light is moving away from C, okay? So this just re uh, represents uh, an input port, uh, an input um, uh, object, okay? If I unplug the, um, the large motor at B, you'll see that on A, it is an output. Okay, you can see it's an output because there is a dot that's moving out of A, right? Whereas in C, it's coming into the, the machine. So you can tell that A is a motor and C is a sensor. Okay, so that's how uh, we can tell the difference. And now, if I press on C, the harder I press, the more squares light up. And there's actually also partial lit up squares if I enter like uh, if I press really gently as well. You see that? So uh, just like this, you'll be able to measure how, um, how effective or uh, uh, how your um, force sensor is recognizing different forces, and different measurements. Very cool. Now let's look at the ultrasonic sensor. The uh, ultrasonic sensor is also known as a distance sensor. Okay. And uh, we'll plug this into E because uh, then we won't uh, have any too many uh, um, um, dots running into each other. So here you can see that E is also a um, uh, an input port because the, the dot is coming into E and it's coming into the, the, the machine, right? Uh, but also, if I put my hand in front of it, it will also track the distance of objects that are in front of it, okay? So if I'm really close, then it all lights up. But as I move further away, it starts to fade out. It's, it's not doing it very well for me at the moment, but you can see that it will start to 
uh, fade out based on the um, the distance of my my hand. Okay, let's try this. So it looks like it's um uh it's not doing it exactly as I as I as I wanted to, but that's the um that's the idea. Okay, so uh, the idea is that you're able to test the measurements of your ultrasonic sensor, uh, even though it's just plugged into the hub and you haven't opened up Spike Prime or anything. And the last sensor that we're going to have a look at is our color sensor. So the color sensor looks very similar to the EV3 version of the sensor. So that's the cube version with the two lenses. Let's have a look at that one. So first of all, I'll unplug uh, the other input ports. And then I'll plug in my color sensor. Plug this into E as well. Here the color sensor lights up. And again, it's showing that it's an input port. And now it is also showing, uh, I believe that this is the reflected light intensity. So if I, if I move it away and shine it, um, uh, further away from my hand, then it's going to show a lower reading. But then as it gets closer and it gets brighter, it's going to show a higher reading. Okay. Right. And there you have it, guys. So that is our first lesson on spike prime and to understand how the different peripherals and the spike hub uh, can interact with each other. And uh, it is a very uh, crucial step in understanding how to debug your programs and also your robot. Uh, if there were any problems and you weren't sure, well, is, it, is the motor working or is it plugged into the wrong spot or is the sensor working? Well, with these uh, on hub controls and uh, and these little visual guides, you'll be able to uh, have a very quick look without even plugging in your uh, robot into the computer just to check and make sure everything is okay. So, hope you enjoyed the lesson. I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.